Okay, and now continuing forward, we're going to learn how to actually use box modeling for building of the body. So I'm going to go ahead and bounce out of the uh, expert view there, go Alt-W, and I'm going to look at the right view is what I got set up, Alt-W on the right view. I'm going to use the frontal view to start for modeling of the body. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab the selection tool. It's going to select these planes here, right click. Let's just go and hide selection right now. Let's focus on the actual model of the body using box modeling. So first thing first, what I'm going to do is bounce out. I'm going to go to create standard primitive box. I'm going to create it inside my top view here. So it builds it on the plane, build it on up. And I'm going to build a box to look at it here. Let's go to the move tool and use our gizmo. W is the hot key and move tool is right here. It's like the move. I'm just going to use the gizmo moving on over. We'll look at the frontal view here. It's analyzing this box. If uh, we look at it, I've created a box by default, uh, three by four by four. Okay, and this is the best numeric values to work with before we convert it into an edible mesh or edible poly, whatever you choose. So once that's set up, I'm going to right click on the box, go convert to mesh. Now, I'm going to use mesh for this because I like the mesh uh, properties, uh, especially the extrude, and you'll uh, you'll see why here in a second. Once that's converted based off those uh, segments and lengths, I'm going to open it up. I'm going to go to Vertex, and I'm going to use this box. I'm going to use these vertices by left-clicking, dragging, and selecting specific areas, and moving them into proper areas that represent the vertices and how they're actually dividing across and how they're lining up down the middle of this body as it references my image here. Now, what I'm going to do is these two vertices here are actually going to become and notice I'm left-clicking, dragging to select the vertice on the other side as well. And come on down. Let's go to shape it as it references my visual. All right. And once that's all set up, I'm going to make sure all my vertices kind of flow across. There we go. Came down to like right here just above. All right. And once I got all set up, that's exactly how you want it right there, all the vertices in kind of that order. I'm going to go to Polygon. I'm going to go ahead and Alt-W, bounce out here. Let's go. And I'm going to go into Perspective View just to select those polygons along that side, which is going to be the arm. So you're going to go to Poly and select these polygons right here. You can use whatever selection tool to select them. Let's go back to Edible Mesh, Alt-W, deselect Alt-W. Let's get back to Right, Alt-W on Right. Get back in there. Let's go back to Poly. Those polys are selected. And I'm basically going to point them in a good area, point them in a good direction so they kind of maybe align a little bit more. Let's use the move tool, kind of move them in a position. That looks good. And now when the polygons are still selected, I'm going to come on down and I'm going to go to the extrude feature. So I'm going to use the up value, just left click and drag over that arrow. That's going to extrude out those polys. I'm going to use the rotate function, outer ring, remember to rotate. W or move tool to move those polys into position. Now I'm going to use the scale tool, okay? The uh, select uniform scale function, the very first one on the list, R on your keyboard, and then just uniform scale from the center, remember? Scale down, move tool, and it's going to allow us to build the arm. I'm going to scale out a little bit, perfect. And then I'm going to go to extrude again, up, extrude, I'm going to, and then I'm going to use the scale tool, R, scale in a little bit, E, outer ring, remember, rotate. W, move that in position, and I'm going to extrude out again, W, move, rotate, okay, and now we're going to build out, that's being the bicep, I'm going to go ahead and build out the forearm, so I'm going to extrude out, and I'm going to find that little edge there where the arm starts to bulge out, so R, bulge it out, scale it out, W, move it, and then extruding in, and R. Again, I'm using the middle value. You don't want to do non-uniform scale. You want to try to maintain uniform scale. And then extrude again down to the wrist. Scale in. I can always go back to vertex anytime. Just select these vertices and scale them back out if I want to reshape. Makes it pretty easy. That completes the arm. And now we're going to build down the middle to... Uh, right above the hip area. So I'm going to go to Polygon. Let's uh, 
Uh, edible mesh is deselect everything. Alt W. Bounce out. Let's go into perspective view. Alt W. Get back in the expert mode. Let's take a look here. Let's go into polygon. Oops. Select on mesh. Go to poly. Select those bottom polygons. And let's now go back to edible mesh. Deselect everything. Alt W. And then right view. Alt W. Go back in. And when we select that mesh, go to poly. Those polygons are selected. All right, I'm going to extrude again. Up. Come on down. And this time I'm going to rotate. So I'm going to hit E or rotate tool right here. Outer ring. Remember, always do the outer ring. W, which is the move tool. Move that in position. Let's extrude up again. Let's extrude up. It means it's going to extrude down. That's perfect. I'm going to extrude up. Up click and drag on the up function. Let's extrude. Extrude down one more time. Vertex. And now I'm going to reshape again. So left click drag. Make sure you're selecting your vertices like this before you move. That way you're selecting the other corresponding vertice on the other side. And we're going to move these vertices into position where they need to be. This is what we call box modeling. Let's get this vertice down. That looks pretty good. Okay, back to the polygons. Now, those polygons are the last ones we selected. So I'm going to extrude up again. Perfect. I'm going to hit R or select the scale function and scale from the middle, remember. Left click and drag, scale out. All right, up again, left click, drag. All right, and then with R selected, remember? There you go. We want to scale up. Make sure you uniform scale. You're you're selecting the very first one in that list. Well, the other two parameters aren't going to work. Let's go to vertex real quick. Let's reshape that. It's like these vertices move tool. You move them all together. Yeah, there we go. Follow those lines based off our template or our sketch that we've imported. All right, extrude up again, and I will scale. Outer ring for rotate, moving into position. Vertex. All we got. Screw it up. Let's take that. Move it. Vertex. Polygon. All right, we're gonna build the knee now. Screw it up. That will help. Let's go and scale out so we can follow that line a little bit. Perfect. And now we're gonna build. The top of the leg, so extrude up. Let's use the scale tool to scale out. Extrude up again, which comes down. Come right about there. Scale. And, and then extrude up, down again. And move vertex. Perfect. And back to the little mesh, and we have completed the body form. At this point, I'm going to deselect Alt W. Let's bounce down. Let's get a perspective view. Alt W. Remember, you have to have your mesh deselect to do the Alt W function sometimes. All right. And now we're going to actually use the soft body. So at this point, I've basically completed everything. I'm going to hide the rest of my scene here. Right click, hide. Okay. All right. Let's get our body. Center of the origin here. Let's bring it on down. It's pretty good. Much, much better. And I will go ahead and go to polygon. And I'm going to select these middle polys. And this will allow us to actually create a little bit more. Whoops. See, I had a little bit of shift using the move tool. That's why you should use the select object tool. Okay. That's Q on your uh, keyboard for selecting W. Shape this arm out a little bit. Looks good. Let's go on down the middle polys here. Perfect. And let's go on down here. These middle poly ranges. Select them. 
Hold control, left click to select multiple polys, remember. Move it out a little bit, shape them, and then the inner ones. Okay, we don't need to be worrying about the inner ones uh, here of the body. I'm going to explain that in a second. Let's move these in a little bit. Shape. Very nice. Okay, and shoulder. Move those up a little bit. Perfect. And the back. Now, what I'm going to do is actually going to go to soft selection, turn this feature on, use soft selection. Fall off can be whatever you want. Grab certain polys, and I can then use move tool and move it kind of. Gives you a little more flexibility of moving multiple polys at once. You can lower the value of the soft selection fall to, let's say, 10. It's going to have more control of the form and shaping of the form. Okay, looks like we got it. So, I'm going to deselect everything. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it, the mesh, go to poly. Turn off soft selection, and I'm going to go to select object tool Q on the keyboard. I'm going to select all these inner polygons. We actually don't need these because we're going to mirror the mesh. So, right down to there, and these two. All those, I'm going to hit delete, knock them out. We do not want inner polys, and then that also goes to the very end ones for the arms. We're going to delete these. Now we're also going to delete the very bottom of the leg because we can model our shoes and that goes for the hands as well later. There we go. Perfect. And those are ready to go. All right, now I'm going to go to Edible Mesh and now let's mirror. So, oh, I got these internal ones too. We don't need these. Hold on just one second. Let's knock these out. Delete. I'm going to go to the mirror function, and when I mirror, I'm going to say I want to mirror off its uh, the axis needed. Okay. That would be the y axis, and I'm going to say instance, not copy, but instance. Okay, and I'm going to click OK. So when we see this, uh, we've got its mirror, and now if I go to vertex. And if I select the vertice and I turn on soft selection, let's say specific vertice, and move it, it will move both sides because it's modeled based off instance. Okay, and once you got this set up, we're ready to uh, either continue using the soft select tool for the polys where I can just kind of come across the mesh and I can shape how I want. So if I wanted to have these come over a little bit more, I can. Move in union, you know, take the soft select off. I can just have that part come over however I want. Um, that said, I can I can use the soft select, or what I can do is actually just send out the mud box, like what we learned before. So I could take uh, one side. We only need one side. Let's say we want the left side here. I'm going to uh, right click, unhide all, and see what else we got in the scene. I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything we got. I'm not going to save the scene like that. I'm going to take this mesh, and I'm just going to basically scale it uh, larger to a good reasonable size to work in Mudbox, so probably about that size. Remember, you can scale everything down later in order to fit the proportion of the head and so forth before you start piecing all the uh, uh, objects and shapes together. Um, that said, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and add a, a mesh smooth, so I'm going to hit F4 and just take my, uh, my face outlines off. I'm going to go on in here and add a mesh smooth. Just so we can see what's kind of going on. Now notice I got some really rough edges here, okay? And we can clean that up in uh, software like Mudbox, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and select it. I'm going to delete the mess smooth. Now in previous versions of Macs like 2015 and, and before that, um, you could use the FBX option. But what I found out is uh, you can also use OBJ. And OBJ works a little bit better in the later versions of Macs. So if I go up to Macs and I want to say Export and I want to... Uh, Export uh, selected. I'm going to say I want to actually switch this to an OBJ. So you can do FBX. FBX will work. 
but every once in a while you might have to use OBJ if for some reason the model doesn't show up in Mudbox, okay? So OBJ is another alternative. But if you watched my previous lesson, we were using uh, FBX also, or send out to directly in the software. So OBJ is another option. I'm going to go ahead and name this uh, Body Setup, okay? That sounds good. I'm going to click Save. And I'm just going to say Export. And everything went out. Hit Done. Now notice I exported out in low poly. I did not have my Mess Smooth activated. Okay, so over in uh, Mudbox, I've got a new scene here. I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to say uh, Import. And I'm going to import in that OBJ. Here it is. It should look like so. It should be titled OBJ. Hit Open. I'm going to keep this mesh, and voila. We've got it all ready to go. So here it is. And if you've watched uh, the previous videos, I'm going to go ahead and go on up to Mesh, and I'm going to say Add New Sub Level. And you sub level, do it twice. Recommend not going over twice. Let's go to uh, select object and let's click on it. Looks good. And we can also uh, deselect that. Let's go to the sculpt tools and let's click on sculpt. And now this will give us the option and uh, to use the smooth. So if I hold shift on my keyboard, I can left click and drag across the mesh and I can smooth it out. And remember, you hold alt, left click and drag in the 3D space and I can just pan around here. I'll smooth out my mesh. And this has got to cut down worlds of time, having to use that soft body selection over in 3ds Max all the time. I can just smooth and round out my edges, smooth everything down, make it look really clean and nice. Now remember, you can use Mudbox or other software like Mudbox to uh, do some uh, uh, modeling as well. So if you want to kind of create more muscular form here, I can remember I can lower the size of my brush and. I am in sculpt mode, so I don't have invert on. If invert's on, it, it pushes it in, so I'm going to go control Z. But if I have invert off and uh, I want to boost up the strength a little bit, say I want a two value and I'm good with the size, I can just kind of bring out the chest maybe a little bit. Uh, hold shift, I can smooth out those abs down. Maybe I want to have the biceps come out a little bit more. Just left click and drag across that area and just build it out. Uh, the knees, maybe I want some more definition on the knees, so I can bend them. Uh, let's say uh, let's say I want to bring this side of the body out a little bit more. The legs looks good. Remember, hold Alt, left click, and drag, pan around. Let's bring out the side of the leg. That looks pretty good. And let's go ahead and just bring out my uh, forearm a little bit. Oh, Control Z. I don't like that. Bring out the side. That looks pretty good. All right. Let's boost up the size a little bit more. Hold Shift. I'm just going to smooth out, round out a little bit more. That looks good just for this lesson. Real short and simple. All right, I'm going to go back to select move tools, objects, select my object to select it. Let's go mesh. Let's remember to uh, uh, step down. So I'm going to uh, step level down one and step level down two and make sure I bring it back to where it was before I export it out. I'm going to go to file and I'm going to go to export selection and once again I'm going to do a uh, export as an OBJ remember you can also do FBX but I'm going to use OBJ because it interprets better in the later versions of Mac so I'm going to do body update I'm going to name this file body update one hit save that will go out and then back in 3ds Max my original scene I'm going to go to uh, 3ds Max import and we're going to import that body update one open I'm going to click import and it's all going to come on over. I'm going to scale it down to fit the size and let's move it on over and voila we've got the updated version. And now you can see what Mudbox has done. So if I add the mess smooth to original And I add a couple of uh, iterations, value of two, and I come back over to the original. And I add a mess smooth to this now. Let's add a couple of uh, iterations to it. You can see the difference. Tremendous difference. So I'm going to delete the original. Got my updated version now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete mess smooth. We, know, we don't ever want to apply mess smooth until uh, all the animation is complete. 
So if you're ever animating a character or uh, if everything's set up, that's the final thing you do before you hit render. Um, and now I want to show you real quick is just how to divide uh, polys if you want to make uh, separate articles of clothing. So to go down to Polygon under Edible Mesh, and let's say I want this whole top part to be a shirt, so I'll left click, drag, select polys I want. And I'll come on down and I'll go to what's called Detach. Once Detach is uh, created, I can rename the object if I want. OK. It's separate. I'll go to Edible Mesh. I'll select uh, the other part, which is the legs. I'm just going to scale them a little bit larger. So let's go on into Hierarchy, Effect, Pivot Point Only. Move Tool. Let's move this on up. You can see a little bit better. Turn that off. All right. There we go. Edible Mesh selected. Uh, scale or right here or R on the uh, keyboard and left click and drag from the middle. Remember to do the uniform scale. It's kind of boost up a little bit. Nice. Got an edge. I'll select all of them and then I'll hold Alt, left click and drag across and I'll deselect. Now, what I'm going to do is basically just uh, with the uh, scale tool activated, hold Shift and scale from the inside. I'll create a little edge there. Nice. And then I'm going to actually go to uh, uh, Edge and uh, Move. And I'll just left click and drag down while holding Shift. And that will create it down a little bit. Delete these inner polys right here. If I intend to uh, mirror the pants later because there's got to be a part that actually connect. And so now what I really want to do with the pants is... I actually want to have these polygons right here deleted and these on the inside deleted. And then that way when I mirror the pants, there's a area where they can actually connect and join. So even uh, these right here would be knocked out. There we go. I'm going to move. Uh, that's exactly what we want. I'm going to move these forward a little bit. So vertex. Try and make sure we're not selecting any vertices on the other side. I'll just move those forward. Shave them a little bit better. Yeah, perfect. Let's go on ahead and move those up to here. Very nice. Okay. All right, and that's how you can kind of create your divisions, and then you can model the hands individually and the shoes, or uh, you can even make uh, uh, the ankles uh, fit within the shoes, so I can scale all these vertices down together and move them around as I choose. Okay, the head would be a separate uh, element as well. Uh, when you reach this part, you would select uh, the other half now and use the mirror option, and you can come off the uh, y-axis, and you could say. Uh, Copy, offset the value so they align, and hit OK. Perfect. And then what you would want to do is actually uh, reattach. So I'll take this half, come on down, attach, left click on the other side, they come together. And if you uh, recall what we learned in the beginning, is I uh, go to Polygon, then go to Create, and I would recreate these polygons now, the middle ones. I build this uh, shirt the way it needs to look. The wireframe, so we can see it a little bit clearer here. F3 is wireframe, don't forget that. Alright, I'm on the back part here. Might be a little challenging, but just take your time with it. Some of these polygons. Perfect. Got them all rebuilt. Okay. Let's go out of wireframe. Let's take a look at the final result here. Perfect. Edible mesh. Okay. That looks pretty good. So, um, that pretty much completes the lesson. I'll go ahead and just show you as you continue progressing with this and you're building your, uh, your character designs and uh, using all these tricks you see in this little video series I put together. Eventually, you can uh, just kind of keep bouncing between Mudbox and uh, 
uh, 3ds Max, whatever you choose. I'll just show you a final example of one of the characters I've done. I'm going to hit just don't save here. Open them up just to give you some insight of uh, what I do as a 3D artist. Um, this is like a final results. This is, uh, this is a character from my portfolio. If you go out to uh, afdigitalart.com, you'll, you'll find this character. I, I used him to build multiple characters. But if we uh, look at him real quick, if I select him, but if I go to Element, Element allows you to actually select um, things that are all attached. You want to make sure that all your final pieces as you build them uh, are attached together, and it's very easy. You can just simply uh, uh, select Edible Mesh, uh, like this uh, pouch here, and you can hit Attach and attach it. But you want to make sure that all of its uh, all the elements that build the character are all attached together using the Attach function. So that's what I did. So if I go to Element, you can still go to the object and select its polygons, uh, even though it's uh, been attached. So uh, by by doing so, you're able to actually uh, attach it all together and uh, rig all this as one element together uh, to move all the final pieces. But you can see I had an outside coat, um, inner shirt, some some buttons here. I had a strap I modeled. Uh, the hands are different. Uh, the hands are separate objects as well on both sides. Uh, there's the face. I, I built spheres. Just spheres for eyes. So if I went to create standard primitives, uh, spheres, there's your sphere. And then uh, rotated them to where they would face uh, accordingly, where this would be the eyeball. Okay. So those spheres are in there as well. Let's go back to element here and take a look. You can see the hat was a different uh, object. And, and then uh, um, I attached them all together, even the shoes. Okay. Uh, uh, what the, the shoes look like back in the Revolutionary War. Um, and then I left the uh, the pouch as a separate object, okay? Just two, uh, two different uh, objects here that build the pouch itself. So anyway, hopefully this video series has uh, really gave you much understanding of uh, kind of some processes to follow uh, for execution of uh, your 3D characters moving forward. Um, thanks again for watching. Go out to afdigitalart.com and check out my work. Uh, reach out to me on my LinkedIn account. Keep in mind that you can uh, go to my LinkedIn page at linkedin.com if you would like to uh, link up with me and uh, have me as a uh, resource and a reference in your uh, list of contacts. You can uh, send me a message at my LinkedIn and uh, that will reach out to my Yahoo email, uh, hence my uh, Gmail accounts, and uh, I can always be there to help you. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, look forward to working with you.